But before I get to that, I'm joined, as on every uh, Monday, by the country's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan, in the Australian newspaper. Greg, great to see you. I want to start yeah. with something out of left field. Um, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison uh, is writing a book, and it's going to be released uh, next month. And it's a memoir which talks about his Pentecostal faith. And it's got the title, uh, Plans for Your God, a Prime Minister's Testimony of God's Faithfulness. You've written a couple of excellent books on Christianity yourself. Absolutely. But I don't, can't recall a former Prime Minister having, having written one on God or Christianity. No, you're right, Andrew. Uh, we have had some very uh, religious Prime Ministers. I mean, our Alfred Deacon was one of the wackiest you know he was deeply into theosophy and all kinds of mad stuff although but he was very sincere about it a lot of our recent prime ministers have been quite serious christians tony abbott spent three years in a catholic seminary malcolm turnbull converted to catholicism very conscientious conversion kevin rudd i think very serious uh, christian what's interesting about scomo I, I admire scomo's religious convictions He's the only one who is willing to talk publicly about his private spirituality. And um, we'll have to see how he handles that. Um, Did it strike you when he was being a prime minister and he referenced his Christianity a few times, did you ever see that there was something distinctive about the way he ran the country or carried himself that was Christian? No, no. I, and and I, nor, nor should there be, really. I mean, no, he... No. he he, I, he used to say the Bible is not a policy handbook, and I agree with that. The Bible doesn't distinguish between centre-left or centre-right positions. Kim Beasley is a very serious Christian. Never wanted to talk about it publicly because he used to say to me, you know, it's not a sin to disagree with my policies. I mean, he's the only politician who ever thinks that. You know, all the others think it is a sin <laughs> to disagree with their policies. But um, what, what a typical Christian would say, and I'm sure Scomo would say this, is being a Christian made him a better person. And he brought his whole personality to the job of Prime Minister. But being a Christian didn't tell him whether he should deregulate the industrial relations system or, or you know, help trade unions. It certainly taught him he should be kind to people and tell the truth and so on. Whether he was better in that regard, I don't know. He certainly wasn't any worse than... than you no, know, I think Minister. he's had an extremely uh, vicious uh, rap and been disowned by his uh, own party... Uh, to treat as a leper, and I'd like to I'd look forward to him uh, redeeming himself, uh, his reputation to some extent. Uh, meanwhile, China, something really odd is going on uh, over there with um, the dictator Xi Jinping. Now, first, he gets rid of his new foreign minister. He, the foreign minister just disappeared. One day he was there, and the next he wasn't, and no one's heard from him now in months. Uh, hasn't been seen. Then there was uh, there were rumours he was having an affair with a journalist, maybe corrupt. Now, China's defence minister has also disappeared. He hasn't been seen for, I think, about a month now publicly. Just gone. What's the story? Well, Andrew, this is very weird and very disturbing, and it shows what a strange place China is becoming. So under Mao, it was a really dreadful tin-pot dictatorship, and then Mao's successors, Deng Xiaoping, tried to institutionalise leadership, make it more stable and sensible, term limits, divided power... Xi has become the dictator for life and China is acquiring all the instability of a paranoid dictatorship. I mean, Xi is not as unstable as Vladimir Putin, but he this getting rid of the defence minister follows a big purge in the so-called rocket force, which is their whole nuclear uh, weapons division. So all the top leaders of that have been chucked out. Some of them apparently have gone to jail. Uh, there's tremendous instability at the top of Chinese politics at the moment. These are all people who Xi Jinping has personally chosen and then he's decided they've fallen out of favour with him because of a lack of absolute loyalty or to Does counteract... He, he may well. I mean, up until now, I would have said Xi's control was pretty well absolute. But, you know, it's a big thing to become foreign minister and defence minister in the Chinese government and to sack both of them within a few weeks of each other, I mean, that would be a tremendous crisis. Imagine if Albanese sacked Miles and Wong. You'd say, well, his government is kaput. But um, here... The other thing, too, is this, is the contempt for the uh, public's right to know, they've just gone. <laughs> you know, their social media, all that Scrub, scrub, scrub. It's like I don't owe you uh, any explanation. They were there before, and now they're not, and now you've got to forget them. 
I want to show you something that's really spookily familiar, Greg. I know you picked this up as well this morning. And I wonder if you could explain it. Now, Italy is being almost literally invaded by illegal immigrants on small boats from Africa. Nearly 7,000 Africans in 120 boats landed in the island of Lampedusa in just one day last week. An Italian Prime Minister took the head of the European Union, Ursula von, von der Leyen, uh, there yesterday to, you know, try and strong arm her into offering more help. But listen to Ursula von der Leyen here. We will decide who comes to the European Union and under what circumstances. That's freaky, because that's almost word for word what John Howard said in 2001, promising to crack down on illegal boat people here. We will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. That can't be, uh, that can't be a coincidence. No, Andrew, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it is a further absolute vindication of John Howard. Nobody thought he could do it and then nobody thought Tony Abbott could do it after Labor unpicked the solution. And everybody, you know, all the wiseacres in, you know, the then Fairfax media and the ABC and the Guardian and so on told us that this would blacken Australia's <laughs> reputation around the world. I forgot. And now you've got the European <laughs> Union, the most politically correct body on the planet, actually quoting Howard's words. And actually, you hear this all over Europe and all over America. You hear speeches in Polish or Hungarian or whatever, and then you hear Operation Sovereign Borders <laughs> suddenly come out in English. And John Howard has been absolutely vindicated here by Ursula von der Leyen. Who's not even a, a, a right winger. I mean, just show, goes to show the difference between a conservative and someone on the left is usually, in this case, what, uh, 22 years. That's <laughs> right. to live long enough. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much for your time.